Good day, everyone. I pray today that you are blessed and that every time you hear the name of Jesus today, you just rejoice because you know and I know that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. He's come from God to be with us. Several places in Scripture, Hebrews and others, it says he came and tabernacled amongst us. An idea of tabernacling is there is he came and pitched his tent in our neighborhood and stayed for a while that we may see and know him. In fact, John bases his whole letter on the fact of this is the person that we've seen, that we've heard, that we've handled, that we've lived with. So my prayer for you today is that when you hear the name of Jesus today, that you rejoice because you know that he's come in the flesh. Now, <clears throat> John, as he opens up chapter 4 here, has encouraged us to ask good questions, to test the Spirit's by the spirits. In the next few verses, he gives us ways to see and understand and know which spirit is which. So today, he gives us very clear understanding about what the Spirit of God does. He says this in verse 2, by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Why go to that extreme? Oh, because it's important that he go to that extreme and that you and I go to that extreme. Because when the Spirit of God is there, Jesus is glorified. Jesus in the flesh has been glorified. Church history has been rife with folk who are trying to say that Jesus did not come in the flesh. But he did. Flesh and blood, just like you and I, who came, showed up, lived in our neighborhood, tabernacled with us, that we may see, know, and experience the Father. Jesus Christ coming in the flesh is pivotal to all that you and I believe about our life of Christ. That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came in the flesh, born of a Virgin Mary, lived a sinless life, died on the cross, nailed to the cross, died on the cross, bled on the cross, then was buried in a tomb, wrapped with most of the Jewish customs, they had to hurry because it was a Sabbath, they didn't quite get everything done. So remember, Sunday morning, the ladies come with more spices to continue the embalming process. <clears throat> Excuse me. But then what happens? Sunday morning, Jesus raises from the dead. And again, this is the fleshly Jesus, because you will remember Jesus in the flesh, if you will. Jesus raises from the dead, and he shows himself to Mary and to the women, and then to the disciples. And what does he do? He says, you got anything to eat? He's been dead three days. I suspect he'd be hungry. Then he's got feet, and they fall at his feet, and Scripture goes out of its way to point out that People fell at his feet. Why? Because ghosts don't have feet in most cultures. The next is, now, most of the disciples, except for Judas and Thomas, have seen Jesus. They have touched him, hugged. All the things you do when someone comes back from the dead, you embrace, you're excited. Tom says, I won't believe until I see the nail prints and put my hand in his side what does Jesus do? Jesus comes again and says, Thomas, touch me. This is a very real person in the flesh that we're talking about. Not some theory, not some idea, but God himself in the flesh dwelling amongst us. And the spirits that say this is God, that bear witness of that, those are the spirits of God. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. I've been many places around our country and in the world, places where I didn't quite know the language. I've been in Brazil. I've been in, in, in uh, parts of the Middle East, parts of Europe. One time I was in a place there speaking English. They had no word, no idea what they were saying, <clears throat> excuse me, because of their accents. But then I heard and experience the Spirit of God testifying 
to itself. As they sang Christian songs in Gaelic, Christian songs in French, Christian songs in German, in Portuguese, in two different types of Portuguese, in Spanish. What's my point there? That the Spirit of God is always going to bear witness to the Spirit of God in someone else. You and I have the privilege of having the Spirit of God live within us. And when we're in other places where the Spirit of God is there, we feel and understand the kinship, the camaraderie that is there because of the Spirit of God in us. Because what's happening? The Spirit of God is bearing witness to itself that Jesus Christ has indeed come in the flesh and lived amongst us. And then Jesus Christ in the flesh is going to return again. Why? Because when we live there, when the world around us wants us to deny that reality, we have the assurance of God, the assurance of the Spirit of God in us that speaks directly to our hearts and our souls to remind us, yes, Jesus did indeed come in the flesh. I've had conversations, sometimes almost arguments, with people about this whole idea that is God real? Yes. God is as real as you and I. Did Jesus come in the flesh? Yes, he did. What's your empirical evidence? My empirical evidence simply is this, what the scriptures say, what does science say, what does archaeology say, what does history say? Then, what does the Spirit of God say in you? And so, the folk are, we're going to deal with this more tomorrow, are denying that Jesus Christ come in the flesh, speak God's truth to them and keep moving. Why? Because you don't need to argue with the enemy. As Proverbs says, you don't need to argue with a fool. Because the Father has sent his Son that you and I may know him in the flesh. And yes, these many years removed, these centuries removed from Jesus' physical presence, because we have received him, because we abide in him, because we are loved by him, we know and bear witness of the fact that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has come in the flesh. So today, friends, whenever someone is railing that Jesus didn't come in the flesh, or that Jesus didn't die, or that Jesus didn't resurrect, anything about Jesus that is negative, remember what John tells us earlier in, in this book, chapter 3. And these are the spirits of the Antichrist that people don't want to believe. John goes all the way back to the gospel with this. They don't want to believe because they don't want to walk in the light because their deeds are darkness and they love the darkness. Speak truth in love. Proclaim that Jesus Christ has indeed come in the flesh. Proclaim and let people know that Jesus Christ does indeed, in fact, live in you because the Spirit of God in you is always bearing witness that that is who you are, God's child, God's person. Jesus, we are humbled, Lord, by the fact that you would come in the flesh. You are God of the universe. You are the creator. Everything was made for, by, and through you. Yet you have chosen us. We are your beloved. We're men and women that the Spirit of God lives within. Lord, thank you. Lord, help us as we hear your name today to rejoice that you indeed have come in the flesh. These things, Jesus, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Lord. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear friends.